In this video, I'm going to show you how to embed forms in your JSM portals. Now, this will take your portal experience to the next level and allow you to create some really, really interesting forms and be able to collect more dynamic data from your customers. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And don't forget to check out the links down below as I have links to my merch, to my paid courses, and most importantly, to the sponsors that make these videos possible. So should go show them some love and try out their apps. Don't want to sleep in cuz I got something to prove. I got to take what I hate and finally make a move. This video is sponsored by Release Team. All right, so if you've ever used Jira Service Management, then you know that there's a couple of different ways to get information from a customer into your queue or to your JSM project. And usually that is done by one of two methods. A user can either email in a request, so they can just send an email from anywhere, and your JSM project will then register that email as a request and it'll just add it to your queue. Method number two is that your users can go to a portal and you basically use a combination of out of the box fields and custom fields to build out this elaborate portal, which then prompts your users to fill out information. You're essentially going to capture whatever pertinent information you need in order to fulfill that request. Now, this method of doing this form with these custom fields requires you to be a site administrator so that you can essentially create the custom fields with the predetermined values, right? Just the way we create custom fields in general, and then add them into your portal. And it's like a whole thing with you need a lot of administrators. And most importantly, and when you go down this regular field method, these fields are very static, right? You can't put any conditional logic. You can't make fields appear if a, a value is filled out before. And so it is a very just static, like here's 10 fields, fill them out. Very basic, very rudimentary. So if you want to take your customer experience to the next level and treat them with a nicer experience, then forms is probably going to be the way you want to go. Forms are going to allow you to add basically any kind of information, collect any kind of field, and make it dynamic. And now we've done forms in a previous video, so I'm not going to actually walk you through the steps on how to create the forms. You're going to want to make sure you check out those other videos in my large catalog of videos here. But today I'm going to teach you how to take that form and embed it into your JSM portal so then it becomes an option for your users to select. And now for a quick word from our sponsor. For nearly 25 years, Release Team has been helping organizations of all sizes to adapt and improve their software development environments. We have experience with a wide range of tools from modern solutions like Jira Service Management to legacy and open source options. Let our experts help you with your next project. Release Team, we are DevOps tool specialists. Make sure you check out the link down in the description down below so you can find how to get a hold of release team. So let's jump into it now. All right, so here we are inside of our JSM project. And in order to create the form, again, I'm not going to go over all the details, but I kind of touch lightly on how to do it. You're going to want to go to project settings. And over here on the left hand side, you have these forms here. Now you have the ability to create a new form. You can either create a brand new blank form or you can go from a template. I recommend that if you're trying this out for the first time, use the templates as they're going to give you a pretty good idea of what's available for you, right? And so you can just randomly pick any form that you want. We'll just go with this like company feedback here. You can add that one there. And then this is going to give you the form just in its raw what it looks like, right? And so as you can see already, if you've ever used the portal functionality in JSM, this is cooler. This is a lot cleaner, nicer. It's a it's a prettier experience, right? So you can stack your fields like this. There's radio buttons that are a little bit more intuitive than the than the default radio buttons that are in Jira because those radio buttons in Jira not the friendliest, right? At least from a custom fields perspective. You can add these text boxes here and again, if you haven't seen the other video where I talked about um how to create the forms. You do have the ability to add sections and you can control here your show section. You can do it conditionally and you can set it like if a specific value has a very specific value set here for this question, then show me something, right? So it all depends on, on how you want to do that there. So it's actually quite dynamic and I really, really like it, but we're going to keep this simple. We're going to just get rid of this and not do these sections. We're just going to toss this around, but I just want to let you know that this is why you would want to use forms because you can dynamically make these fields appear. And of course you have a lot of options, right? You can just add a field. And as you can see, you have a lot of options here without having to go bug your Jira administrator and so on and so forth, right? And again, just the UI looks way, way nicer, way, way better. 
and it's just so intuitive to make these fields. Now, before we get too far, I do want to give you a disclaimer on why I don't recommend you use the forms because the forms, as beautiful as they are, as powerful as they are, because unlike the forms in Jira Work Management, which totally suck, these are really, really cool. They're very powerful, but there's one significant drawback that you need to be aware of. You'll notice that when I do this stuff, right, if I do a paragraph here, a paragraph there, whatever I pick, you're not actually creating a field. You're creating an element within the form and the whole form itself is like a container. And so what now sucks, the drawback is when you bring this data into your issues, when the when your customer fills it out, it's not a field. So you can't query on them. You can't do JQL. You can't do filters off of them. You can't do logic off of it. So you, you're essentially going to capture the information, but that's it. Now you have information that you can't do much with it. So my preference and my recommendation is still to use just the custom fields because that's gonna give you the most power. That's gonna give you the most flexibility with what you're able to create. You lose that ability to like, hey, if my user filled out option like over here, if they filled out option A, then I want this next field to show up. You lose that when you go down the regular way. You obviously get it here in the form, but now the con to using the form because you do gain that dynamic uh, showing of the fields, is that you actually lose the field data, right? You, you lose the ability to do now cues off of it. You lose the ability to do anything more powerful off the data that your users are submitting. So your mind is gonna vary and you're gonna have to weigh your pros and cons there. Once you have your form, I'm gonna teach you how to actually do something with it. So once you have this here, I'm gonna hit save changes here. We are ready to embed it into our JSM project. Now there is a little bit of a chicken and egg situation. So what you want to do is you want to go back into your JSM project. You want to make sure that in your project settings, you go to your request types and make sure you have your request type set up correctly and have the request type where you're going to put the form you just made. Because if this is again, a chicken and egg situation, because you can't just create the form and it'll magically appear. You're going to have to put the form somewhere. So you still have to go through the motions of creating the request types. Again, different video for that. I won't walk you through it all here, but go and make a request type. All you gotta do is click that request type thing here, go through these steps, right? And make a request type. But assuming you have one, right? So I'm just gonna pick this password resets one, right? Then you're gonna be able to go back to the forms, go into the form that we just made, and then you're gonna go to settings over here. Now, once you're in settings, you're gonna want to do this request form here. There's a slider click on that slider, it's going to prompt you to pick the request type. So we're going to do the password reset. And that's it. Once you do that, you're going to want to scroll all the way down and I'm hiding it. But down here, there's a save changes button. And so you'll be able to click on that. And now your form is saved successfully. So now we can go back to our project, we can go into our portal. And so now when I go into my portal, and I pick my general here, and I go to password reset, guess what's going to show up? I'm going to have any fields that I may have already had right on the request type, which I would have had the summary, the description, right? I had these going into it already. You don't have to have all this, but now you'll see that my portal is here neatly tucked in at the bottom, right? And so all that information that I had on my portal, here's that fake label that I made. Now this just gets appended. So when you fill it out, right? So all you got to do is like demo form. You're going to fill out your description or whatever required fields you have. You're going to be able to set this all up here right? But now you can do this, Joe, and then you can put numbers, you can put your title, CEO, Joe at awesome.com, right? You can fill out the rest of this information here. doesn't matter what you put in here you're just filling it out because I want to show you what it looks like once you have this information inside of your ticket. So once you hit send, this is going to go and generate the request. You can see we have demo 21. I can go back into my project hit refresh on my queue and demo 21 is going to eventually pop up. It does take a second here sometimes. So it just depends on where you're at in your queue. So here we all go. Here's demo 21. As you can see it's at the very bottom and watch what I'm talking about, right? So you have the fields. This is a description. This is the due date. These are custom fields. These are out of the box fields, right? These are just fields in Jira, but now you have your form here and look, I can't click into it. This form is just information that is captured. There's no editing like I can over here with any of the other fields. Now you can reopen it. You can reopen the form and then edit, right? And then, then you can change the information, 
but now it's you, the agent that's changing this and not the customer. And it's also not again, a field, right? So you can save and submit and the form will be basically saved with this information, but there's nothing that we can do dynamically, right? So, Cause with any of these fields, right? I can do a JQL that gives me the, gives me the issues by the due date. I can do a JQL that gives me by the assignee, right? By the reporters, things of that nature. But with any of this data here, it's just data that you're going to be able to see in that request and can't do much with it. So anyways, that's how you're going to embed these forms. I'm, again, you're going to have to weigh uh, your pros and cons, whether you actually like this or not. But the video here explains to you how to add forms and very briefly and quickly how to create the forms and how to embed them into your request type so that you can present them to your customers when they're filling out the request. And now for a quick break to hear from our sponsor. Have a DevOps project in mind? Integrating new technologies, modernizing a legacy system, or just exploring your options? From assessments to licensing, Release Team has you covered. See how we help the state of Colorado migrate and consolidate multiple legacy tools and processes into Jira Service Dev, aligned with the DevSecOps principles of a fast flow, continuous feedback, and high trust. Go to releaseteam.com slash case study to learn more. Release Team is an Atlassian Gold Solution partner for both public and private sectors. Now back to the video. So if you found this video helpful, make sure you drop that like button. If you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, now's a great time to hit that subscribe button. And most importantly, don't forget to check out those links down below as these videos are only made possible because of the amazing different support methods that we have. So we have a merch store, go get my t-shirts, go get my paid courses, and don't forget to go try out some trials for the apps of the vendors, sponsors that make these videos possible. So if you're ever wondering how can I help support you and your mission here, go check out those things down below. That's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. So